We've already ripped Jay. We've already ripped Deerbauer, who still hasn't gotten off of his lazy German ass to respond. And now we're back to rip Kingpin. And for that process, I am using a, a new secret project video card. Uh, uh, I'm gonna let you guys in here. As, uh, uh, I'll just, I'll just. Yeah, you put that right there, man. This is my spot. <laughs> Stop them! So last video we're doing here at EVGA's uh, headquarters or in the OC lab with Vince, AKA Kanepin. It's going to be the namesake card, the Kanepin card. We saw this at CES. You have one here with the shroud removed. So this is, this is not obviously the uh, exact stock configuration, but what has changed here since CES? Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Aorus AD27QD Gaming Monitor. The AD27QD is a 27-inch 1440p gaming display with 95% of DCI-P3 color saturation for high color accuracy, accompanied by a 1 millisecond response time, 10-bit IPS panel, and Display HDR Visa certification. Additional features include fluid adjustment and slide, RGB LEDs for personal flair, and firmware features like cooldown counters, reticles, and adaptive noise reduction. Learn more at the link below. Um, well, it's pretty much the same card, not much different. Uh, the CES card was using a 120 yeah. millimeter rad. We changed that to 240. That production card will come with the 240. That's mm. better cooling. Uh, and also the, the OLED on the CES card, it was a permanent part of the cover, but we want it to be able to be modular. So when you use LN2, you can use this. Now, the reason why is because Tin put a special measurement on there so we can check the grease when okay. it's frozen. You can see the delta now. Oh, interesting. So when you lose the grease, you will see the delta giant. You can warm That's, the card up. You see the delta close. You're That's ready to go cool. again. Yeah. Okay. You can see it all real time on the display. The temperature reading is like two minus sixty four. So you still like even if you're running like first pre cooling, you will see like how the temperature change, and you will keep uh, keep an eye on uh, also software monitoring. So if those uh, readings uh, within like five ten C, then you know you have a good grease contact. That's cool. So uh, <clears throat> right now you have it set. You were running Port Royal. And should let's let's start with I guess before we go into more detail let's start with the clocks you have set up just because that's probably the biggest uh, point of interest here. Yeah, this is this is a pretty good card. Um, the, all, I think I think most users who get this card will be pretty happy with uh, the majority of the cards. They they will be handpicked. Mm. And this this card is no exception. As you can see, I have it set to twenty two twenty, and which is very high. Yeah, it's very high. Uh, and eighty four seventy five and idling, it's getting twenty nine C. And this is this is the card on the bench right now, right? Yeah. That we're looking at there. Yeah, this so is just on the liquid cooler, then not a, not under any crazy cooling. No, this is this is pretty much anybody can do this. You buy the card. You know, I got a lot of when I post the LN2 result, I posted an SLI result for this card a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. just a quick one, and I got some feedback like, "Hey, we want to see what it does with the shipping cooler." Yeah, we yeah. don't care about LN2. Well, okay. When I knew you were coming today, I thought, what better way to show <laughs> gamers and right, daily right. users what the card can actually do so here you so go and in, in terms of uh typically to get a, any kind of frequency like this on the rtx series you have to push a lot of power through the card right? definitely so is there on the bio side of things are you running a bios that i can get stock like it, it, is this a special we will we we always take care of our customers every every generation um and this generation won't be any different. Uh, this is not the shipping BIOS, mm. but this is a BIOS that uh, all, all KP users okay. can get access to. Cool, sure. cool. Also, like one of the reasons why we had uh, opted for uh, three power connectors is that you it allowed to raise your power spec limit. Mm. So actually, shipping card will be already with higher power limit, and you also can increase uh, using the precision to one forty four percent. So on, let me ask then on the three connectors, how how necessary is this versus two? I mean, what's your well? Main... It allows you to essentially remove the power limit. So if you even running like a water cooling OC, like mm -hmm. you will never need to worry about the power limit. Right. So unlike the two power connectors, you will always be limited by the power and then by the temperature. So mm -hmm. here you just worry about the temperature and then card will go as high as it can. As high as the temperature allows. Yep. What um. On these cards, what, what kind of cold scale do you normally see? I mean, like, is there a point where it stops scaling? Uh, 
To be honest, not all cards are the same. Okay. Some cards can run full pot, full temperature, mm. and make a nice clock. Some cards require around one. Thir- I saw one thirty-five to one forty-five is sort of a sweet spot. Okay. Uh, before you start to run into issues either with the grease or with uh, the GPU itself. So is it? It's typically is it a uh, like a silicon <clears throat> variance thing? I guess like. Well, with the uh, Turing GPUs, you like you have even more power cramped in mm-hmm. the chip, so it's very important to have the contact and uh, grease, uh, mm. right? So, like sometimes you need to have a couple sessions to get the best result. Okay. So with, um, I guess I, while we're standing here, can look at memory clocks too. Fourteen seventy-five offset, I think. Is that yeah. what that says? I tested. I tested a few of the the early production cards and. They're, they all clock to around this clock, every single one of them, okay. Samsung memory. I uh, think for, for perspective for viewers, I think we were, the max we were doing was about 1220, 1240 on a, some of our 2080 Ti's. Yeah. So that's quite a bit higher. Yeah, and that's, was that, what's the, it's not Samsung, right? I think it was Micron. Micron, Micron. Yeah. yeah, Micron. And that, 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 that typically, uh, I don't know. I see with the Samsung memory, the reason why I chose it for this card mm-hmm. is because it's more consistent. Okay. You don't see like some cards stuck low, some cards going high. Right. Uh, less luck of the draw, more this kind of performance. Mm. Most cards do fourteen twenty-five to fifteen hundred. So do you? Uh, it, when you were in our stream chat, right, you were posting comments about uh, Delta clocks. You, you commented about setting the three D Mark settings and Nvidia control panel as well. Yeah. Um, what can we go through? What are Delta clocks like? What and and memory straps. What's your kind of top level explanation, I guess? Mm, in what way? What do you mean? Well, so you were talking on the stream about how, I guess the best example was, I think at the time I was looking at maybe like an 840 megahertz offset versus like an 800 megahertz offset. Memory? What's that? Memory we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, memory, memory. And sometimes we would see uh, better performance by stepping it down, right? Like stepping, it, stepping the offset down would yield higher performance in scores than stepping it up a bit. I don't know if that's because you're like missing a missing like a memory. Well, like it's really like a two two questions essentially. Like mm. one question is regarding the GPU frequency because in the software you can set with the granularity like one megahertz, like mm. like plus one megahertz, plus two megahertz. But actually, a real hardware will set in steps like fifteen megahertz. Right. So like not you will see like even if you increase plus ten megahertz, nothing will happen and performance will be the same because the clock actually the GPU is running is the same. Mm-hmm. So it will go, go in those steps. But for the memory, like if you push too hard uh, for the offset, then actually there will be errors from the memory interface operation. And when GPU detects an error, it will uh, like basically resend the data again. Okay. So you will lose the bandwidth even your frequency is higher. So are they, are they uh, effectively memory errors? Like is it? Yeah, yeah, like okay. interface errors. So mm-hmm. they are soft errors, not like, like artifacts or crashes. But like, if you push harder, you will get to that point. St- as well. Stuff that you can't see visually, I guess you just see it in the performance. Yes, yes. Okay. First, you will see the performance drop, and then after that, if you push more, you will see the artifacts mm. and like crashing and stuff. Like that. Right, right. Now, on this particular card, I saw like when I when I select fourteen fifty, the score is almost always low. Mm. But as soon as I select fourteen seventy five, it's it almost nails it every time. Okay. So like, yeah, certain frequencies will score better. And certain frequencies just won't score. The internal clocks won't won't is come that, up. Is that the same on uh, on pretty much every GPU from a particular model, or does it change like card to card? Uh, usually, it's kind of similar. Like okay. the level you can see is different because like there are a lot of like the power, the, the, the PCB design, mm-hmm. all that uh, is uh, affecting as well. But like in general, you can see like the rule is applied for the same generation GPU about the same. Mm, okay. And the score you're getting here, you've been at 10,000 something, right? Like 10, yeah, we've been ripping 10Ks like all morning. It's It's been looping. I mean, 10K, 10K Port Royale, 2200 GPU, 1475 memory. That's 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 pretty nuts. If you go home and bench your Titan X yeah. at the same clocks, I think you will be, wow, that was a good score. Typically working with these cards, you keep kind of like a, a keep out zone around the GPU for LN2 pots to mount Definitely. more easily. Same with the OLED, right? Like, mm-hmm. It had to be in a per- particular space on the card so the LN2 pot would fit. We do that with everything, all the okay. components around the GPU. Right. Essentially, that's the reason why you see like the VRM piecings uh, on the both sides uh, separated. So they're actually mechanically different pieces. 
And so you can even like if you install aftermarket water cooling mm. setup, like maybe you are running chiller, then you would want to you keep the original VRM heatsink, so your VRM is uh, nice and cool, and also you have the custom GPU uh, cooling. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So the cooler itself is an Ace Attack Gen Six pump, I think. Yep. Yep. Except so you have the control over the fans on the radiator and also control over the fan on the VRM mm -hmm. heatsink. So the, that additional fan will help to push the air through, so like memory and VRM will stay cool, and you don't have the, the, the thermal throttling problem. Just just so over 10,061. 10, yeah. 2200. You know? Yeah. Now you know with the GPU boost, I'll start the benchmark at 2220. And you know this thing's hitting about 45, 40, 60 max under mm. load at this speed, so that you know it drops a little bit. It'll right. drop like one delta. Yeah, the turbo boost is still like in, in the place. So every five C, you will have the temperature. See, thirty one C, it just kicked back. Oh, so it is is that the step? It's about five degrees Celsius, or eh, plus or minus. Like okay. it, it, the, the range is not the same, so it's not all the way up to eighty three. But like you will see the the, the steps. Okay. Yeah, I think. Um, we we typically see changes like the they most the, start around from 45. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just going from like low 80s down to like 70s or okay. if you can get it to like 68 or something. It's low pretty, 80s. Pretty big difference. <laughs> well, I'm talking about like a stock card, yeah, right? They get hot, right? Yeah, yeah. When we saw that, I was like, you know, this this card has to have water cooling. Yeah, standard. it helps a lot. It has to. Yes. Um, yeah, we have the, all the usual Kingpin stuff, like from mm. the previous generation. You have LEDs to monitor the power and uh, probe it, uh, so you can measure the ex using external DMM. Right. Measure the GPU voltage, memory voltage, and flex voltage, and also 1.8 and 12 volt input. So make sure everything is okay. And also we'll have the option for the interface uh, ex external mm. interface on USB on the down there, so you can use the like EV bot controller, right? S similar things, but just using the existing hardware. Is this is this stuff hooked up to anything right now? I mean, or well, well this is we were doing some testing, and currently it's not. Uh, so, so we, is this for? Uh, but this is what we use for benching, like to to measure the voltage stability. Okay. And the DMM we use to monitor the GPU voltage, mm -hmm. the memory voltage. So, uh, Vince, what sort of? Voltage do you normally run out on this for for uh, the GPU? Right now I have it overvolted to about one point one five. Okay. I noticed it scaled a little bit because the temperatures are low enough. Right. Uh, on on LN two I run mm, upwards of one point five plus. Okay. Yeah. Pretty high. Yeah. So stock is a stock max is something like one point zero nine three or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. But it really depends on the GPU. They're all mm. a little bit different. Okay. They're not the same. For so I see memory voltage here, one point five. Yeah, essentially we have like the extra hardware integrated in the card. So like usual card, you have the DMM, you have mm. the, some sort of connector to it, to the card, so you can see what the real voltage is because the software doesn't actually uh, read over the one point one volts or uh, there, there about. So we integrated the, essentially the DMM function into the card, so you can see on the OLED. You can see all the voltages, all mm -hmm. the frequencies, all the temperatures, and you can actually configure through the software what uh, items you want to see okay. each, cool. each time. Any idea on availability or pricing? I know it's been a, a while now, but we're thinking thinking s hopefully sometime in March. Okay. Yeah. Pricing TBD, I guess. Yeah, but there's going to be a hydrocopper. Okay. And cool. there'll be a hybrid. But the hydrocopper will be limited edition. Right. Kind of like a special skew. Okay. Like special, special one. Um, but I think March. I think March on the hybrid and maybe a little bit later after the hydrocarbon. Cool. Last question I have for <clears> you <throat> is, can we take one apart? Or is it not ready yet? I think so, yeah. Okay. Why not? So maybe maybe separate video, we'll see. We can give we'll you see. another one for that. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Cool. Well, thank you for the walkthrough. Uh, I guess look out for it in, in March sometime, probably. Yeah, March. I would say March. Cool. And check back for all the other content we've done here. Subscribe for more, as always. You can uh, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help out directly. And thank you to Vince and Tin for joining me. We'll see you all next time.